opportunity for the president to make his case on the biggest stage that anyone could possibly have, which is why the president agreed to delay the State of the Union as opposed to doing a speech on the original day, which was the 29th of January, somewhere outside of Washington. But the president already getting criticized by the Senate Majority Minority Leader Chuck Schumer and the president responding today on Twitter saying, quote, I see Schumer is already criticizing, criticizing my State of the Union speech, even though he hasn't seen it yet. He is just upset that he didn't win the Senate after spending a fortune like he thought he would. Too bad we weren't given more credit for the Senate win by the media. Immigration will lead off the president's list of priorities tonight, which also include infrastructure, health care and drug pricing, trade and deregulation. Some of those are agenda items on which the president believes he can get bipartisan agreement. Others like immigration, of course, will be much harder. However, Congresswoman Katie Hill from California, who was on with you earlier today, indicated this morning that she could accept the president's proposal for increased money for humanitarian assistance, increased money for strengthening ports of entry, protection for DACA recipients, and then $5.7 billion for a steel barrier. Listen here. I think we can come to some kind of an agreement that keeps the government open and that addresses the major issues that are happening along the border. I'm sure it'll get me in trouble with some folks. Listen, I don't want to, we, we all know it's not that 2,000 miles uh, concrete barrier. So I'm, I'm, you know, as long as it's not that, I'm pretty good. As long as it's not a 2,000 mile concrete barrier, I'm pretty good with that. And the president has said repeatedly that it's not. If he can't get an agreement from Democrats before the 15th of February, he's got a couple of options. He can shut down government again or declare a national emergency. I guess he could also do nothing as well. But his aides believe that a second government shutdown won't net him anything more than he got the first time and that an emergency declaration would likely get tied up in the courts and then you're sort of out of options. But, but what Congressman Hill said this morning, and you and I talked about this bill uh, off camera, was significant. The White House believes there are a lot more Democrats that feel that way. The question is, are they willing to break with Nancy Pelosi or will they stay in line with her? Uh, the first lady with 13 special guests tonight uh, in her box. Uh, one of the guests we've been talking about uh, earlier today, uh, Joshua Trump. He's a sixth grader from Wilmington, Delaware, who has been mercilessly bullied simply because of his last name. He'll be in the first lady's box. Also, the daughter, granddaughter, and uh, great-granddaughter of a couple who were murdered by an illegal immigrant last month. Matthew Charles, the first person released from prison under the new First Step Act. Timothy Mason, a Pittsburgh SWAT team member who nearly lost his life, uh, stepping in to the line of fire at that Tree of Life synagogue shooting. Also a cancer survivor, a young woman recovering from prescription drug addiction, and more. It's going to be a real big show tonight, Bill, so uh, and, uh, make sure indeed, that uh, everybody stays tuned. Just want to squeeze in a quick question. Does the White House have a number for how many Democrats in the House they think they can get their vote on that, like Katie you know, Hill? I don't think that they've got a specific number, uh, and I don't know if they even think that they've got enough to pass it. Uh, so, I, I, as they said, I, I, don't, I don't think they've okay. got anything specific. There's just a sense that there are a number of Democrats who feel the way Congress. Some, some who are gettable. Okay, John, thank you yeah. so much. John Roberts, you bet. thank you.